again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And spring is upon us. Yes! <laughs> we made it through the it. winter, folks. Um, <laughs> spring officially kicked in on the 20th. Um, 21st. Equinox? Yeah. I know, it is weird because I was listening to something and it was the 20th and I was like, okay, whatever. No, I'm pretty sure. It, well, whatever. It was recently, yeah. since we last talked. Um, I... We did some outdoor work on our shed and stuff, and Dan playing woodworking man out there, whatever. Um, <laughs> playing woodworking man. He does. Man. He, he likes, actually makes he things. He does. He did. He made. He's not um, playing. He's playing. He spent <laughs> Sunday. I, I shouldn't make light of it because he's very. He's getting very good at it. He made two screech owl boxes. Screech owl. Well, yeah. So if you, they say if you, <laughs> so it's they're like the a little ones. Hogwarts. No, they're like a little owl that Harry is, Potter. No, no, no. Screech owls are little. <laughs> And we did, Dan heard this one. This is a literal screech this, owl. It is a and bird, this is a folks, specific in size, case you're confused like A I specific am. size nesting box. Okay. With, you know, it, apparently there's rules. I have heard those screech yes. owls. They sound like someone's being murdered. Yes, so Are they we, those ones? I think so. I don't know. So um, the thing is, is that if you build this box and you put it in the right spot, Space you can attract. Oh, cool! So he built two. I don't know why he built two, but whatever. Um, so he did that, and I cleaned the shed because I hate a disorganized shed. Which, by the way, I have a stack of signs for you. Uh, <laughs> Every um, time someone spring cleans, yeah, I just get more, more signs. yard signs, um, which is good. Was, and then yesterday, because it was nice out, I went out to the patio, and I'm like, let's just put the patio furniture in position to where it will be when you know when I get back right. from vacation, and it's. It's really, really warm. Yeah, I was at, um, actually, we had some friends over for dinner on Saturday night, and we were, it was hot yeah. enough, and we were outside watching the sunset, and it, uh, yeah, it's it's all dusty, yeah. and I was like, oh, it's time, I've got to yeah. start spraying things yeah, down yeah. and getting things ready for yeah. spring and summer, yeah, so we, we made it through... Uh, the what did they call it? The 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 darkest the dark, the dark winter. times or the yeah the darkest yes. winter. Boom, boom, boom. And yet here we are. So uh, so that's all good. I news. did. Um, I saw which kind of just irked me. It always irks me. I saw a Facebook post by the state parks system saying, you know, make your reservation to come to the park. And I thought, why the hell do I need to make a reservation to go hiking in a park in a state park? I I pay taxes here for those state parks and. It triggered me to ask um, one of the state reps who's on the reopening task force mm -hmm. to say, could you like fix this? And he came back with, well, it actually isn't part of the COVID guidelines anymore because that was lifted. This is actually a business decision. And I said, well, I think it's a really stupid business decision. I shouldn't have to make a reservation to go to Ordeon State Park to go for a walk. I'm sorry, I shouldn't. No, you know, we, we actually went to, what's the one out towards the Free coast towards the sea coast. Um, Not Pawtuckaway. Yeah, actually, but you can't was, bring your dog. Right, so, 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 why? Two things. If I, you know, could magically wave my magic wand today on this <laughs> Tuesday, but you know, every week's different. I mean, I would go for world peace. Can right, we just wave that one? But. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this whole notion of we have state parks where you're not allowed to take your well, dog. So people are like, COVID, COVID, COVID. And if you have comorbidities like obesity or not eating in the right way or not exercising, <laughs> then, oh, you're going to die. So now we lock down the entire world. How about we let people walk their dogs in well, state parks? That might be a positive towards a direction where we could actually I, have a healthy functioning I society. haven't seen it yet. But oh, help I me know. here. I have some hair or I don't something. see anything. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. Wait. Oh, you got it. It was <laughs> okay. on your eyelash. So, Sorry, um, <laughs> we, I, I haven't seen one recently, so maybe they fixed it because typical stupid government. Um, there used to be like TV ads or billboards of people walking their what, dogs. Yes. And then yes. you'd go to the website and all the parks say no, you can't bring your dog. No, or you wouldn't go to the website. You would just rely on, on their the, actual advertising. Their show up with your dog and because you this can't. has happened to me. You know, and I'm just like, why? why? Well, and it's funny because I looked at it and it says visiting with your pets. All you know, all animals must be on a standard and retractable leash. Okay, so maybe fine. you can't take your dog, but you can take your, I don't know, pet gerbil? Um, I'll, I'll just say all animals. Animal owners shall clean up. Okay, I, that's just common sense. And they can't be left unattended at any time. Okay, fine. Pets are prohibited year-round at Monadnock State Park, Northampton State Beach. I'm okay with the the, the regular beach. Ordeon State Ordeon Point State Park, 
Rhododendron State Park, which is out near, I think, Monadnock, and Wentworth Coolidge Mansion State Historical Site. Now, they, that's year-round. And then seasonally, which is basically anytime it's warm. Um, all <laughs> so anytime you might possibly want to be somewhere Beaches and designated okay. swim areas, picnic areas, pavilions and group use areas, Pawtuckaway State Park, um, Hampton Beach State Park, not to be confused with Northampton State Beach, um, Elakoya State Park, Rye Har Harbor State Park, and White Lake State Park. And... It just uh, irks so, me. Yeah. So, because so my I, dog doesn't cause any more damage than most humans. No. And the point is, I want to get outdoors and we you, can't. What are we supposed to do? Leave the cut? We have to leave our dog home in order to uh, go enjoy hiking in a state park for, yes. that we pay for. I don't know. I, I you know, out. anyone who's been watching this show for a while knows we are constantly like, what is the dumbest thing the government's done today? This is one of them. This is one well, of and them. also this reservation system, in addition to paying whatever the fee is to do use the park, you know, it also includes a dollar fee to reserve America. So, like, if you are poorer and, you know, it's bad enough you've got to pay to use the parks, now you have to spend an extra dollar and, God forbid, you only book one I don't know it just irks me so uh Anywho? I I did bring in the paper today I'm gonna start with this one which just made me laugh because you know this is up my alley so nutritionally they have now figured out after a <laughs> 30 year study <laughs> that five servings a day of fruit and vegetable may help you achieve a healthier longer life now you've probably been hearing that your entire life and guess what they probably don't mean potatoes they don't. And actually, for the first time that I can recall, which was kind of the point I was going to make, is they're like, oh, yes, not potatoes. So they say here that um, they basically analyzed uh, 2 million people worldwide mm -hmm. over 30 years. So I think we can fairly say this is a pretty good study. And they say those people who eat five servings daily of fruits and vegetables were 13% less likely to have died than those who only ate two servings. Huh. So, so more, so I guess. Up. And then um, the people with the lowest risk consume two servings of fruit and three of vegetables daily, but not eating, not all fruits and vegetables are equally protective. Starchy vegetables, what does starchy mean, folks? Things That's that, carby, yeah. starchy, carby, bad. Yep. Uh, such as peas, corns, and potatoes. And fruits, uh, especially fruit juice, because yeah. I have this. Fruit juice is misleading. So, so, so those are bad things. Potatoes, peas, uh, anything corn. starchy, corn. Yeah, corn. Popcorn is not a healthy snack, <laughs> folks. Dan will and, tell you that. Um, and then also fruit juice is not healthy. No. It's, it's basically sugar. fructose sugar yeah. in a glass that will spike all your stuff <laughs> and then give you, you know, over the long term, it will make you fat and it will give you I'll diabetes. i that's not necessarily easy to do either. Three, you know, five servings a day. It sounds easy, but I'm like thinking about our normal, like our meals yesterday. And I'm like, okay, so we did have a big salad for lunch. So that probably counts as a couple. Yeah, and it probably. did have, you know, we had, you know, mixed greens and uh, what are they strawberries and some peppers and peppers probably aren't the best ones and uh i don't know cucumber and tomato right so i guess i did um what did i have with dinner last night mm, See, I had two, I, oh i did have a squash so that's not necessarily the best one but our friends kate and alec gave us a um i can't think of a type of squash but i love it so i had that and we had carrots carrots aren't always the best either i mean carrots in moderation eating, right. is fine that's, i mean you you don't want to get to that stage where and i've seen my friends you know where they turn orange because yeah. they're on the carrot diet or yeah, whatever no, carrot diet not good you know so basically you know i'm not sure if, you know if we always say this but basically a, a keto or a pa paleo diet is basically Basically, lots of fruits, uh, not a lot of fruit, a little fruit, mostly berries. Moderate fruit, very uh, Veggies. Lots of veggies. You can eat a lot of veggies. And lean proteins. And lean uh, and well, protein. Protein, but it I mean, doesn't have to be, be lean. In no. fact, like bacon, because no, really no, no, what no. you're going towards <laughs> is you want to start to get in those good high fats. Yes. So avocado oil, avocados, mm. you can eat. Bacon, you can eat. Mm. Cheese, you know, like uh, creams. Uh, creams, all of that, right? So basically, there is no correlation between fats and art attacks. No. That is basically, again, if we're back to government. If anything, it's the sugars that yeah, so the sugar is exacerbated. And also, of course, um, basically, 
the food permit they told you to eat accordingly yeah. has caused the self-inflicted yeah. chronic disease we see today. Yeah. I think more than 50% of America is now obese. Well, and it's a hard to break. Those are eating habits that become very hard. When, you, when I say to people, well, just give up bread, and they look at you like, well, how would you do that? And so, I'm like, well, just don't eat bread. I mean, and we eat bread once in a while, and we'll have low-carb um, wraps and things like that. But I mean, people, many, many people eat bread at breakfast, bread at lunch, bread at dinner. And you're like, just don't eat all the bread. Stop eating the bread. And honestly, now that I don't eat I don't bread, really I mean, I'll eat it if, if my friend Gail bakes it. Because it's delicious. Because <laughs> it's delicious. And also, actually, Michael Pollan, who wrote The Omnivore's Dilemma mm. and several other books, um, great, interesting, brilliant, brilliant guy. I really admire him. But, you know, he said you could pretty much eat anything you want if you make it from scratch. Right. So, so if you, you don't love have pasta, all that, yeah. make if you make own. it from scratch, right. because that's going to limit. And that's actually one of the few times I, we, I can't even tell you the last time we had pasta, but for a while, usually once a year, and I probably will do it again this year, I will make, I have a pasta, you know, a real one that you crank. I, um, I probably will make, I usually make linguine once, you know, once. Yep. And then I get it out, and then I'm like, that's it. Honestly, here's what I learned too. So I, I, I won't make pasta anymore, and I just won't I choose just don't, it, yeah. right? But I, uh, but I'll substitute with zoodles yeah. or zucchini noodles or some kind of squash yeah. or, I even, you know, if you get that pasta craving, yeah. I'll just cut thin, you know, uh, zucchini and yeah. just put tomato sauce yeah. and make like salami yeah. and you and know fine. olives and whatever, and you bake them in the yeah. oven, and they taste exactly like yeah. a pizza. So I guess my point is. It's really not that hard because a lot of times the carb is really just it's like the, a carrier. It's just the vessel. Yes. So what's good about pasta is the creamy, bacony, right. mushroomy, cheesy. So put that on cauliflower sauce. So you can just as easily put that like, on zucchini. Put, put that, it on you know zoodles, and right? it's delicious. Put it on diced up chicken. No, the good there, part right. is the 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 <laughs> right. It's the stuff, not the. Although bread, I I do love bread, and I mean I, we don't eat a lot, but like we went out to. Um, this place in, there's a white birch eatery up in Gosstown. Mm. Very good. Yeah. Very, um, you know, good quality food. And I think really yeah, sort reasonable. Of like farm to table. Yes. They moved and, from Bedford, I um, think. I don't know, but they've expanded. They got a good size space now. Um, sometimes we, if you go on the weekend, it's a little slow to get in because they're very conscious of spacing and everything. And, um, but like we will go up there and get. Um, grilled cheese. You know, I could have grilled <laughs> cheese every day. But it's like, but that's, for us, that's an out of the norm thing. And yeah. then we split it, you know, and then we have the big salad on the that's side. That's so funny because I, I think it must be a memory from childhood or something because cheese is just I, the I best forget thing. where I was. I read a menu recently and it had grilled cheese and like, I was like, oh, grilled cheese. <laughs> right? Yeah. It doesn't even have to be good grilled cheese. Any grilled no. cheese is delicious. Oh. But that's my bread. So the other uh, couple of things I want to make sure we talk about, um, the stickering bandits. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you saw this, but um, to his credit, the Manchester police chief, um, Old Oldenburg, I believe Something is like his that. last name, uh, had one of those meet the chief meet yeah. and greets last week. Now, because of uh, the craziness we find ourselves in, also, maybe because, you know, it's more <laughs> convenient. It was a Zoom meeting. Okay. There were hundreds of people yeah, on there. Which is good. So I jumped on because I genuinely had some some legitimate questions. Everyone who watches the show knows, mm. you know, I'm a police accountability hound. And I wanted to um, ask about that Lori's yes. list that we talked about last week. So this is the redacted list where you can't see who are the police officers with sustained findings of misconduct. So, you know, you could put your questions in and he was reading them and answering them. And that is a really quite it's, a hard- it's, tedious. it's not easy to do. It's a hard format. And so I was one impressed. So thank you, Chief, for actually answering my question, mm -hmm. although I didn't like your answer. But, um, but you know, I asked, can you yeah. tell us if there are any active duty uh, police officers who are on that Lori's list? And he was like, I'm sorry, that's confidential. I can't tell you. That's not correct. That's not true. And so, you know, as a learning experience, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, and I told him that in the comments and, and I did a little summary on my website, mm -hmm. um, you know, where people can see, um, there are several misstatements that he made, and I think these are things that should be addressed. So we, uh, we used to have access to the police scanners. Yes, and we haven't had that for probably 
three years now? It's since 2016. So basically, just the backstory there was in 2016, we had that um, the the homeless guy who who had a gun, and then uh, there was a police officer. There was a manhunt, and then they locked down the whole West Side. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because we still had access to police scanners at that time, and there were people actively listening, which is bells and whistles, mm -hmm. accountability, making sure, you know, people are watching what's going on. Uh, we knew that they had caught the guy. Right. And then they kept the neighborhood locked down for another seven hours. Right. So people didn't like that. So what was the solution well, to that? Well, let's encrypt the scanners. Let's encrypt the scanners no so more, that you no can actually you. check what's going on. So he claimed that the police log is updated every 30 minutes. It's that vague. is not if, correct. I, and also... And that still is not... There were a lot of incidences that aren't in the police right, log. Right. And I'm trying to figure out how, how do we fix that problem? Because... You know, rightly or wrongly, there are people who are going and they're doing these like pop-up mask-free events, right? I don't know. I haven't actually seen it. I just vaguely heard about one. And um, I think there was one that took place at a hotel at the Hilton. And apparently, they were never asked to leave. I think what happens is they do this pop-up mask-free. I don't know if they <laughs> I don't, dance. I don't right, even I don't know what they it, do. I, I don't have the full story. But there is some pop-up mask-free thing happening. And typically, the place will ask them to leave, yeah. right? And, then, and when, then if you don't leave, that's criminal trespass. Right. And you can, you know, call the police and have someone leave. So this establishment did not call the, the, the did not ask them to leave. They right. purely called the police. So then when the police showed up, they were like, fine, we'll leave. And the guy was walking away and he got tasered from behind. This is recently? This is like last week. I missed in, this. In Manchester. No, it's not missed, written up anywhere. Uh, I heard it secondhand from people who knew people who uh, knew people. And I was like, where is this in the police log? Hmm. Because also, I think one of those things where we're like, how can we, how can we fix some problems? Or how can we look past the statism of yep. laws and, you know, all the paperwork and all the words on paper and just kind of go, what do we think as a yeah. society? What do we actually really want as opposed to what is? Right. And, and like, for me, one of the things is, I mean, uh, you, you don't shoot people in the back. You don't attack That's people from behind. If someone is walking away, even if you are irked and annoyed and maybe like you're, you know, you've been primed because someone was being cheeky or disrespectful or not obeying or whatever. If they're walking away, right. let them go. I think this notion that we're allowed to attack people from behind because you are authorized to do it is wrong. I think as decent people, mm. we should say like a minimum rule is let the, the right. I mean, wait, you learn that on a, on right. a, in the playground. Return another chip, you <laughs> right. So, so yeah. So, um, I think there's still work we have yeah. to do, but I'm encouraged that he did yeah. it, well, that he answered questions yeah. that, um, and I hope they'll do them more and that we can figure out a way. I don't see why we can't get the scanners again. Right, it, it, cause it is kind of, you know, I, I'm, you see things, you know, and it, it wasn't just police activity, 10 minutes, we're down to 10 minutes. Wow. Um, but you know, like when you see in a lot of fire trucks or, you know, like there's some commotion, you know, it's nice to know, should I be concerned? Is that just a motor vehicle? Like, what is it? And it's sad that I find the only way I can find out is to go to Facebook and find a non-affiliated website right. to the police department to get to find out what is going on in my neighborhood and when I there's a large it's, uh, and, you know, police and, or fire presence. And it's it's a mistake to treat your citizenry like enemies. And right. this is like one of the things we I because I've been working on police militarization hmm. stuff for so long. You know, we would I would go up to the state house and I'd be like, if you create this militarized force, you're training people to see, see us as us an enemy. As you know, and, and that's not the, and and it's that's like that's not the purpose of a, of a public police force. You know, if we when, when people had the scanners, I mean, it would be a handful. You know, you have to be some kind of nerd to be into that, right? But you could like but when there was something reporters. going on, you could right. You could We'd be like, and, oh, something's something. happening. Let's send a reporter. And out. then we find out if something is a problem beyond, you know, like maybe there's a problem 
that's caused this um, presence. And shouldn't other neighbors be aware of a problem in their neighborhood that they can just be aware of? I'm not saying you act on it or anything, but you know, if you know, if you find out that houses are being broken into and the police are having to come and it's down the street from your house, maybe that makes you a little bit more aware so that you're a little bit more paying a little closer attention to not only your home, but your neighbor's right. homes. Isn't that a good thing? It, it, it is, in my opinion. Okay, one more thing. Subject All matter, right. because this is actually very, very important. Okay. Not that the others weren't. Education freedom accounts. We've been talking about that on the show for a while. There was a great um, little op-ed by Frank Edelblu, who's the uh, commissioner of the Department of Education. And, you know, the, basically, these education freedom accounts, it's being pushed through from the Senate side. Yes. Um, they tabled the House bill. Yes. And basically what the goal is, is, in, is to allow the money to follow the child so that the children... State money. Just the state, state money. money. So that children who we all know do learn differently, one size doesn't fit all. One size might fit a good portion. Might you be. know, because actually one of the interesting things I thought that I, I read here was that, um, you know, it, it really, so across the country, over 21 million children are eligible for some type of choice program, but only 1.3 million students actually take advantage of these programs. Right, so not even 10%. Right, so so the point is, what, what we're trying to do is to make something available, that's what choice means, mm -hmm. right? So, so the parents who need it or want it can choose it, the parents who don't want it can continue to send their children to public school, right? Um, this demonstrates clearly that these programs are for students for whom the current system is not working. Right. So, um, so then he says that in uh, 1990 in Wisconsin, they, they introduced a very similar program. So this one's been around for a long time. And it says that um, there are all these studies that are now out. Mm. And these studies pretty much prove everything we assume, right? So of 17 studies that were considered student, uh, that considered student outcomes, 11 showed positive outcomes and four showed no visible effects. So the majority, 11 but out no of 17, said, you know, this worked. Um, and then the big one and the one that you'll hear from the teachers, who, by the way, all got vaccinated and then all called in sick well, and on that, Monday. I think that was probably administration. That Bad sounded bus. like a sick out or well, something. It, I mean, I, I read was something like, wow. this morning that said they were directed by the administrator in, uh, I think it was Concord. They were told they had to go all on the same day to get their vaccines because somebody said, why didn't you just stagger, stagger it? it? And they said, because we were told we had to go on one day. So shame on the administrators that didn't think that through. Because I, I, I work with somebody who has kids in the school and she couldn't come to work yesterday because her kids were home because, you know, I mean, the vaccines. disruption of just, yeah, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. So then it says, how are the effects on our public schools? Will they be devastated no. as the opponents assert? Turns out, no, that's a myth. Of 27 studies that looked in the effect of choice programs on traditional public schools, 25 out of 27 of them showed positive effects on public schools. Right. So, you know, data matters. Like, we can't just hear well, these hysterical data things. Data matters to those who actually want to know the truth. The, the scare it? tactics are, this is going to cause your property taxes to go through the roof, and we're going to decimate the public school system, which doesn't make any sense because we're only talking about here in New Hampshire. I don't care about other states and how they fund their schools. Here in New Hampshire, your schools are funded from two sources. Your statewide adequacy money, which on average is about four thousand dollars a student, and it has you know fluctuation depending on the student. The new Claremont's coming out today too. It's and, gonna be bad convo. And um, the and the rest of it comes from your local property taxes. But if I am spending, if if, if you live in a community where say the average per student spending is sixteen thousand dollars, if a student leaves and four thousand dollars goes with them. $12,000 that have already been in your property taxes are remaining in that school. So when when the 
opponents of this bill try to tell you your property taxes are going to go up, the only reason your property taxes would go up is if spending increased for fewer students, which makes no sense. But here in Manchester, well, we they've haven't been adapted doing that. over decades. We have thousands fewer students, and our our school budget goes up millions of dollars every year. So these schools are not adjusting to the 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 number of students or the needs of the students and. If, I mean, did you notice, I don't know if you noticed this, but remember maybe like four or five months ago when that audit and report came out about Manchester schools, and it very clearly said four Manchester schools need to be closed yep. down, and they named them. And then over the course of the past four months, somehow three of those four names have stopped being mentioned. Yep. And, and they're the just only closing one, Hallsville. Hey, yeah. But they're not getting rid of any teachers. So, so you so know, where for folks back going? home who, who, you know, understand how balance sheets work, you can't keep spending. Well, you can. For, well, you, and it's well, not well, your you're own gonna, money. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, you can. It's easy to spend then, other people's money. But you shouldn't. <laughs> Let's go there. And also, it doesn't make sense. And that's part of the reason we're in these problems. Right. I mean, when you look at, I know you said we don't care about other states. No, and I, and, no, and no, I, I agree do. with that because, you know, let's focus on what we got going on in New Hampshire, which is, you know, some good stuff. But all these states that are getting bailed out now, oh, it's I mean, ridiculous. It's, you know, it's we're talking about pension funds that haven't yep. been adjusted. And, no, and, and we're going to run into all they those gonna... issues here, yep. too, it's unless we start it. to adapt, adapt or die, folks. Um, so, yeah, so so your property taxes aren't going to go up if they actually f do it right. If they do it wrong, which they likely will, right. then we might have a problem. But hopefully next week we'll be able to report on... You will be able to report. I'll oh, be on the beach. yes. Next week Sorry. she... Oh. I go to Florida in a couple days. I'm jelly. I'm <laughs> we went to go see a SpaceX launch, and now there isn't one, so if that... Oh, Makes well, you better. still get a beach. I still get to go to the beach. Yes. I'm, I'm jealous. I, I need a holiday, too. Uh, but that's it, I think, for I this I think we're almost show. out of time. Yep. Um, if you have any questions about the education freedom accounts or about state parks or you have any feedback, like if you've got a story about your kid that need, could, would benefit or your experience at the state park or anything else locally, um, by all means, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and we'll get back to you. Check out Carla's book. I got it right. Um, <laughs> the Ecstatic Pessimist. Um, very good read. And we will. We'll, I'll be back next week. I have a beach. guest, Lori Ortolano yeah. from Right to Know, will be coming to tell us the sagas from Nashua, <laughs> where they have now arrested two yeah. different ladies for asking That's questions about what's up at City Hall. Yep. That's all we got. Take Enjoy, care, guys. Bye. Bye.